So welcome back. Today we will be flying the, the Hornet 5.7 in the British line. And today is a bit of a different video. Because in this gameplay you're going to see pretty much everything that's wrong with the game at the moment. So it's going to be a long one. And it's going to be a bit ranty. But it will still showcase the, the Hornet quite well. So if you want to see the Hornet, I will. I commentate on the plane in the meantime. But in between the, the boring part. Because this plane is very much about patience. Uh, drawing out the game. This is what not a plane that you can go in. Get some quick kills. Of course you can when they all stall out. But in general it is a very time takely process. If that's proper English. I doubt it. But you understand what I'm saying. And here I have a lot more power than the Donier. He has a very bad energy retention as well in these turns. So I'm just bringing him up. There's about three people near me. Friendlies. So I will just stall him out. Easy kill for them. Initially I didn't really see them, I was stalling him out for myself. But then I see the whole team coming in and, well, easy bait. So the first thing that is wrong with this gameplay. Husky. Airspawn maps in general. Uh, there are certain planes that are balanced by the airspawns. Like the... Some bombers, some of the attackers. And when you give everyone an airspawn, uh, that's completely nullified. That's one thing, that's one boat get the air spawn, uh, but on this side only one side gets the air spawn, which is objectively even worse. We all get an air spawn, except for some of the carrier planes, like the, the Corsairs, and they all have to take off on the ground. Of course, the 152s, the Donniers, etc., they still get an air spawn, but that's about, what, 10-20% of that team? The K4s, the 109s, uh, the 190s, they all have to take off from the ground. Where we just get a 1 km air spawn with 450 kph, so we can easily zoom instantly up to what? 2 kilometers, while they're still revving up the engines, which is quite unfair to say the least. Husky is one of the big examples, and I've gotten this map 4 times today. 4 times! And I haven't even been playing that much. And the second part problem I have with it, this game at the moment, look at these clouds next to me. You'll see more of that uh, later on. One and a half kilometers till seven kilometers of clouds. Of course only on one side of the map, but clouds like these are not welcome. Like I like the small map, the small clouds that give a tactical approach. Not this map that uncovers the whole map, which makes pretty much carrying, pretty much flying impossible. Because I can jump someone, he doesn't see me. And that's unfair. I get in gun range and he disappears. Which is kind of weird. And then by the time he reappears. Guess what happens. He, he's somewhere else. He saw me. He noticed me. He's starting to move. And it, it never made sense to me. Why where when I zoom in. That people disappear. And especially I can see the dots across the map. But as soon as I get within 700 meters. The whole plane disappears. And then at 300 meters they reappear again. Which is just completely broken in my opinion. It's uh, one of my most hated features and it almost made me stop playing a while ago and it, it almost did today again. It's very obnoxious. Alright, get a crit on the 109. Dodge him because I don't, I don't want him to full commit me. Of course, for obvious reasons, because that's something people really like to do with this plane. He's stalling himself out for the point 47, so that won't be the hardest shot in the world. He's very slow and I have some decent speed, I can maneuver, because the Hornet is very, very slow at low speeds. At these speeds it's, it's doable. Like between 450, 600, it's, it's actually quite maneuverable. Of course the roll is a bit sluggish still, but it still has a lot of power and it pulls quite well. So you can make up for it. I uh, get the assist for the head-on I got. No, that's one less. And for now I'm just going to extend from uh, Jolly to Roger. Or Jolly Roger. Jolly the Roger is someone else. That's why I mixed them up. P47 somehow doesn't want to stick with me. So I'll, I guess I'll do it myself. I'm not very confident in this uh, situation. Of course I do have the power. But if he just lag pursues me. And that's where he just gets it level. Starts outrunning me and that pitches up. It's kind of where the problems arise. Because this plane is very sluggish at stall speeds. And when I stall myself out, uh, I'm a very big target. And those 151s really do fuck you up. 
especially when you stalled out. And it's easily sprayable from 1.2 kilometers, which has happened to me before, admittedly. But he looks to be going for the B24, so he drops some health, he drops some speed. So now I can 1v1 this 109, and this time I actually am quite confident because I'm going for 10 IES at 7 kilometers, and that's a K4 who was going slower than me to begin with. And I have the, uh, of course, I have quite a uh, performance gap up here. Single engine, very good engines, and these engines will keep pushing me up. But he got the flat turn, which is a bit unfortunate because I wanted to showcase the vertical performance. But he comes back, which is exactly what I want him to do. So he comes up, I'm still going 330, IES, so I'm going a lot faster actually. So th this is ideal. He's coming up for me. I'm gonna see where he is going after the stall, or the stall after he pitches back down, which is right about here. So I'm just gonna cut him off. If you don't predict where he's going right, he will outrun you. He will cancel all the way. And there's very little chances you're going to kill him. If he's any good at defensive line, that is. Miss those shots. Get a crit. Quite a bit of shells, but whatever. He's crit. 109 with wingtip damage. Aileron damage is not the most fun to fly. So I'm just going to ignore him for now. Because I doubt he's going to be much of a problem. I see the Tempest dogfighting a 109, which is something I don't see him winning, so I want to be there as fast as I can. And of course, he's busy, 109 is busy, so I can easily come in and kill him here. Or at least that's what I thought. Uh, he disappears, and then he comes back. And in this case, he was slow, so I don't really mind, and look at the amount of sparks I got there. And no, the sparks aren't the problem I have with this game at the moment. Of course, they are annoying. But sparks are somewhat workable. And I know 109s are very tanky. German planes in general are very tanky. So I can forgive that. It's just these clouds. And then luckily the clouds stop. And get more hits on him. And that's why I hate clouds. Just people materializing around you. Because some people don't appear. Some just... I don't know what they're doing, they just sit in the clouds all game, wait for you to get below it and they dive on you. Of course, it's a tactical play, but it's not an enjoyable one. Especially in planes like these, where you can't really react to people on you. So if I get cut off by someone diving on me right now, because I can't even see them, even if they were there, I'd be dead. Like planes like the Japanese Spitfires, they very, they get a very big like benefit from them. Because they can just sit on you and you don't see them and they can stick and you're not getting them off you. Whereas in these planes like the P-38, twin engines in general, uh, 109s to an extent, like if they jump you, you, you pretty much can't do anything because you're too stiff. Whereas they can just sit on you, throttle drop you and by the time you even see them, uh, you're dead. Like by the time they're actually spotted, because mostly the spotting system doesn't work in clouds either. To interrupt that, I see the 190, he's the only one that's not gritty, I see him go up, but of course I'm gonna switch to him as a target beforehand, because these two are crit in the wing, and I don't really see them pose much of a threat. And then this happens. Uh, K4, so there's a few things here. I am a lot faster than the K4, of course, if we start with initial energy states. He's faster than me right now, because he's, he's coming out of a dive. But I know that the K4 struggles keeping sec 610, roughly. So when I'm going 700, I know that he will bleed his speed faster than I will. Uh, it's a bit sketchy, because he will get very close. Like, I can try to reverse him, but it's not gonna happen. So I might as well just try to run away from him. The other two 109s are crit, so they're probably RTB, so I won't be seeing them for a little bit. And there it comes. 700 meters, roughly. He starts to shoot, also drains a bit of his speed, and I'm slowly gaining some distance again. He hits me, he keeps hitting me with those 13 mils, and they don't do the most damage at these speeds, at these ranges. So I'm not too worried about him. 
what I should be. Because those 30 mils do hit pretty much as hard as Shivax, as weird as that sounds. But if he uses the right belts, of course, which he isn't. He's using air targets while well, you should use IAI, which are the Incendia Reaction Tracers, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but uh, the, the, yellow, uh, the yellow belts. So I'm just going to extend away from him. And I'll see you in a bit when that's what that's done, because this just keep going for a while. So, fast forward a little bit. Uh, he hit me with those 30 mils, got a fuel leak. And now I'm just going to go up, because I have the energy advantage at this point. I'm going a lot faster. I have some altitude on them as well. So at this point, I can probably go up and stall them out. But the problem is my engines are overheating, so I have to make this quick. If I don't keep whapping, you will catch me. So I will just burn my engines to get this one shot off. This is very risky, but he's going pretty much as fast as me. And I'm roughly 900 meters above him. Plus my low speed thrust is a lot better. So I'm just going to go up and hope it's kind of hoping for the best pretty much. My engines are already burning up. Yellow right now. I'm going to stall over. Or flip over I should say. Got the throttle to make my loop a bit uh, tinier. And he couldn't pull up. Of course if he had dived in the way there I would have been dead. But you know, it's, it's not a problem. And the second problem I have with this game as you just saw on the scoreboard. Those two people I crit at the start. They crashed. And I didn't get any kills from them. So that's two kills that I didn't get. And normally I wouldn't really mind. Of course he still died. It's uh, Roger who just left and uh, the other dude and they don't give me the kill, they just crashed. Which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, like you saw the amount of rounds I put into Roger. I crit him, then I hit him two more separate times and I don't get the kill for it, which is a bit unfortunate for me. Because well, uh, I potentially missed out on the 7 kill game right there. Which is something I'm kind of aiming for. So that's that's too bad. And I really I really would like if they would fix the, things like that. And now, well, I'm uh, pretty heavily damaged. There's still uh, four people left. And I'm going to go for the carrier landing. For the carrier landings. Uh, this is one thing... I see a lot of people complain about on Husky and the other naval maps that you can't land planes on the carriers and I'll give you a nice little tip for that just belly land don't use your gear because if you do use your gear you're just gonna overshoot and you're gonna die it's as simple as that so try to keep your plane as slow as you can of course preferably you want the carriers that move so when they move away from you you can shave off another 60 kph of the runway of what you have to break so you potentially go what 200 minus 60, so only 140 difference. So I'm going 1 250 here, plus the carrier is moving. Break a bit with the guns, slam it down, and I don't know what this was. Just holy fuck, why? why? Ah, this carrier only goes 30, but you get the point. The only problem with the carriers is when they start moving, as in to the left and right, you will get slingshotted off. I don't know why they implemented this, but you know. Playing very wonky. I don't know. Uh, also, when you get crit and you use your rudder, I'll uh, put a clip of that on the top right right now. I don't know what it just. It's, I don't have any words for that. B29 got killed. I want to intercept uh, the 109 going for the B24. He don't seem to be wanting any of it, and he just head on to me. I tried to shoot a bit on his left. Shot too much to the left, and I missed. He of course wants to go full commit head on because that's what 109s do. Or German planes in general really. And I want to turn around again as fast as I can while he's engaging the B24. I can engage the 109. And this match has been going on for about 25 minutes right here. Very long game, that's why I cut out uh, the longest part. Uh, the flying around. Uh, the just the boring stuff that you don't want to see some people do want to see it but I can't talk nonsense for 10 more minutes like I'm not very good at monologuing to begin with let alone when there's nothing happening and this guy Rustam that's the one I crit at the start 
that crashed and didn't get the kill for it. Uh, I guess because he repaired, it's kind of fair that I don't get the kill. That's the only thing. There you go, last kill. Or last engagement I should say, because if you look at the top, that is the last thing that I absolutely despise about this game. Ticket bleed. I don't care if it's 84's rushing the bases or the pillboxes and winning the game in 5 minutes. I don't care if it's an objective being miraculously completed and me winning or losing. Because I'm about to have fun with Mon 109 and I thought finally I have a 101 in this plane so I can actually show you what you can do in those. But no, no you can't because I won on tickets. I won on tickets and I sincerely don't get why they do this. I know I'm just ranting here and they probably won't change it, they probably won't even look at this. But it's just so unfortunate. I would really like if they did anything about these things. And then the same thing is happening here. I'm having quite a fun fight. It's a bit of a long one again. This, this just showcases how the, this thing flies. To its fullest potential. Like of course you can dogfight with it. If you really feel like it. But I don't advise it. It turns like a brick. It's one of the worst turning planes I've flown in a while. The energy is very good. Don't get me wrong. But you don't want to fight people on equal terms. So I'm just trying to fight this guy. And look at the tickets. There's two 84's. Killing everything on the ground. And as I'm trying to fight these people. You know. I'm having some fun. I'm trying to sell these people out. It's a 2v1. Which is something I, I'm quite fond of. I'm not quite fond of these head-ons. But you know, I dodge him. It's a 152C3. And a G6. And I'm at 7 kilometers, So I should be good. It's just going to take a while to kill him. So I'm not running him again. Or still I should say. I'm just having fun. And at the start of the game. They killed a few pillboxes and tanks. And I don't know what else. Everything that cost tickets. And then slowly. The AI. The AI will just kill each other. And uh, what that means is. That the moment you have over half your tickets left. And the enemy team has over 80% of their tickets left. You better haul your ass towards the middle of the battlefield. And kill some pillboxes. Or prepare to lose. Which is another thing. That I don't really like. Why is ticket bleed a thing? I get it. You win on the ground, you win the battle. But I think that it's completely ridiculous that in two minutes, 284s can pretty much kill half of the tickets. And what happens after that is, they can just run away and they've effectively won the game. Because if you try to chase me up here, if you try to dogfight me at the moment we're at 8.5 kilometers already, because this thing climbs like a rocket ship, they have to, chase, they have to kill me if they want to win. Because the Germans... Like most planes, especially the K4s, they don't even have bombs. They can't really ground pound. Of course, the, the, the ME410s, uh, the C3 with the gun pod, or with the gun pod with the HVAP 30 mil, can kill pillboxes and tanks. But in a general sense, the Germans don't have the best ground pounders, apart from the Junker 288. Which makes it so that they have to kill me to win. They can kill me because it takes. It takes a lot of time to kill this thing if it's flown properly. And it takes me a lot of time to kill them. If they fly properly. Like he is. He's diving away. I'm not hitting that. And I win. And lastly. Um, a problem with this plane when it's crit. Like I get it. I only have one engine pretty much. Uh, my wing cruiser's crit. Uh, I burned up my fuel. So it's very imbalanced. But the problem I have with this, you can look at the rudder. I'm not doing these movements. You might remember from uh, when you had that packet loss bug when you got hit. And it's very much like that. Just look how it's twitching. There's not, I'm not moving my mouse. Now, now I am. 90 only have one engine. You see that twitch? That wasn't my that wasn't my input. Of course he's too slow to dodge me. Because he just came from the airfield, probably the damage engine. Look at it. 
Not as it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. I'm not, I'm not touching anything, and he's just, he's just passing out. Like I see the brother on the left, and that's also why I went into the spin. This is the full clip of the, the clip you saw before. Like I, I was like, what happens if I press the brother to the right? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what. So, I hope you enjoyed the little rant. I at least got something off my chest, because this has been bothering me for quite a while. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you in the next one.